Hi, I'm Everett. Welcome back to the shop. Um, this time what I have is a uh, project that's going to span a couple videos. Um, one of the things that I have in my shop is a 12 by 36 import lathe. And when I got it, um, because of the slope of my floor and I didn't have a machinist level at the time, and just trying to get it set up and functional, I didn't do the full um, tweaking and uh, whatever as far as getting the lathe um, fully leveled, if you will, and so I have a suspicion that there may be a little bit of a twist in the bed. So because I don't really want to be knocking holes in the floor to put anchors, I mean, I've seen this neighborhood and they're still building houses nearby. I've seen how thin the concrete pads are here and I really don't want to be digging a hole into it in the, uh, in the garage floor. What I'm going to do is the next best thing, which is make wider feet that are fully adjustable on the four corners of the feet for each of the two pedestals. Um, you'll see it come to fruition as, a, as I'm going along here. But uh, first things first, uh, Jim Dedman uh, sent me a package in the mail. And uh, yeah, so he sent me, was really, he's a really cool guy actually, you should check out his, uh, his channel, I'll put a link below to his channel as well. Sent me a couple of his special uh, modified uh, children's paint cups. I haven't had a chance to uh, fill them up and use them yet. He also sent me few acid brushes to use with said ones, some chip swiping brushes, and a small stack of stickers. So I'm going to add these to the, uh, I'm going to add at least one of them to the sticker wall, and i got a couple others to put on some other things. So anyway, I just want to say thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. So this will be a multi-part video. Uh, hopefully it'll be interesting. Uh, if anybody else has a 12 by 36 lathe like mine and doesn't want to knock holes in the floor, I'll show you if it works, then you're welcome to the plan. Just give me a shout. Otherwise, hope you find it interesting. And the other day I gave the bandsaw here a little bit of love and went through and cleaned it up and readjusted the fence and the blade and, and well, she got a new blade too. There we go. I was holding off as long as I could, but it was time. It needed a new blade. And yes, I know I'm doing this kind of backwards, but this is for a reason. Normally, <laughs> normally hang your stock off that way, not this way. But I have my reasons. Now, some of you also may notice uh, something that's new here. Uh, for some of you who may have seen the, the saw before, I've finally got the cover to fit. I've had the saw for, what, probably a year and a half now, something like that. Year, well, maybe a couple years, actually. The cover never did fit over the belt, so I've just been careful around it. Well, the other day I decided I may as well actually do it right once I had the once I had the saw apart anyway. So I modified the insides of this so it actually fits correctly now. Again, import equipment sometimes you sometimes you win and everything works well, other times you wind up with needing to do some adjustments. Let's just say Yeah, nice. Yeah, she's cutting much straighter and squarer than it was the other day. Just needed a little bit of love. Three more of these, and then I can start cutting the short chunks. Okay, so I've gotten all the square tubing cut, and uh, now we're on to cutting the eight uh, round sections. Um, this is one and a half inch uh, cold rolled round bar. Um, it had a bit of rust on the outside, uh, so what I did was just popped it in the lathe, covered the ways, and then gave it a quick sanding and scotch braiding to clean it up. Um, the pieces have to be inch and a half long. However, uh, I want to leave a little bit on either end to clean them up and face them before I center drill them. Um, and so I went one inch 650 just because that's what seemed like a decent idea. Gives me about 70 thou, 75 thou either end uh, to play with just in case there is a little bit of out of square. Um, now, one thing I did do is, because I haven't gotten around to stealing Harold's idea of the little locking collar uh, to go there, uh, so that I could take my stop and move it up, I just used a C-clamp for now. Uh, rest assured, Harold, I will be pilfering your idea in the near future. So, otherwise, got her set up there. Away we go.
There's one. So now I can just take the bar. There we go. I have seven more of these to do. Um, yeah, I'm not going to bore you with all of them. I'll bring you back in after. Man, I tell you, sometimes it's hard to get time out in the shop. Um, well, let's just put it this way. Little man's down for a nap this afternoon. Managed to get a few things cleaned up and some space in here. And uh, the furnace just quit, so hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, next step, once now that we have our material cut to length, is what I want to do is mark out where the holes go on the longer pieces. Um, what I'm going to, what we're going to do when we assemble this is there's going to be a bit of a fish mouth on either end, and these little slugs are actually going to be face down to an inch and a half long. There's going to be a one inch 14 thread put through each of them and welded to the ends of these, and then they're going to be cross pieces. Um, what we need to do right now though, be, while I still have nice square ends, I want to mark and drill the holes that go through each of these uh, long pieces that will line up with the holes in the feet of the, well the feet of the pedestals on the on the lathe itself. Even though we're looking at 21 inches center to center on each of these um, each of these slugs where they weld on, including the, you know, that means there's a fish mouth that takes in, um, I figured there's no point in wasting that little bit of material there plus make extra work for myself for grinding so I actually cut each of these 3 eighths of an inch short on purpose. Uh, these pieces right now are uh, well 20 and 5 eighths so if I subtract 3 sixteenths from the length measurement of 7 and a half and 15 and uh, 7 eighths from the ends then uh, that'll put us in the same spots for the holes. All right, so that's the length from that's the length from the uh, from the front end here. And one other thing I wanted to mention was uh, my brother-in-law and some of my other family watch my videos too, and so my brother-in-law Ross uh, I heard the offhand comment a while back when I broke my scriber, and so I got myself a new scriber for Christmas from Ross. So thanks, Ross. Appreciate it. So what I've done here is I've taken the first piece and set up a block mounted to the table as a stop and I've located my center of my, where my hole needs to be and locked the table in the X and Y so now theoretically I should be able to take uh, each piece and uh, center drill the top pop the next one in center drill pop the next one in center drill and then I can just work through the drill bits uh, sequentially that way Start with a, starting with a uh, center drill I'll do a 3 16 pilot and then a half inch finish hole um, after that, what I'm going to do is move around so that we can then do the same process on the other end. And yes, I know I could have run that drill bit faster, but changing speeds on these machines is kind of a nuisance actually. Well, you know those times when uh, you have two or three different things on your mind and you're just not quite paying attention to which lines are the actual layout lines? Well, I managed to poke pilot holes in all of them for, through one, for one of the holes and then realize it's in the wrong spot. So, full Murphy disclosure, have to admit. So, for, for that, what I wound up doing was readjusting, setting up where the uh, stop block is. And uh, now, when I poke a hole in this one, there, that's the, uh, there we go, that's the center mark for the correct spot on this end's hole. The other end still has to go over here and those are fine. The bright side is, at least it was just the pilot holes and it's actually going to be hidden underneath the pedestals of the machine anyway. So, uh, yeah, it's just a screw up and an annoyance and, I mean, whatever. I'm human. Murphy happened.
And, well, I have to pause now anyway, because I can hear a little man squeaking in his crib. I guess this afternoon nap's over, so I'll catch up with you when, when I can. <laughs> well, he squeaked, rolled over, and went back to sleep, so I got a few more minutes. <laughs> Any of you who are parents and try to get stuff done around them, you totally get what I'm saying. Let's face it, the only people who don't make mistakes are the people who don't do anything. So, I never claimed to be anything more than human. That's better. So, now we can change out and drill a pilot hole in the correct location. Alright, first set of holes. Alright, all four of them are drilled like they should be. Uh, just a matter of deburring the holes. And then next step for these parts is the fish mouthing on the ends. But I think I might do the uh, threaded adjusters first. So I have eight of these slugs, inch and a half in diameter. And what we need to do is uh, drill out the centers and then uh, thread them for uh, 1 inch 14. Uh, UN, well, it's a UNF, but uh, there's been some changes over the years to be between whether it was 1 inch 12 and 1 inch 14 as far as a fine thread. I have 1, 14, uh, one inch 14 uh, ready rod to be using as my jack screws, so we're going to do 1 inch 14. To start with, all I'm going to do is face the ends just take a quick skim off the ends of all of them, and then we'll set up for cutting to length. That's the basic idea. We're going to repeat this eight times. Okay, that's number eight. So. What we'll do is pop that out of there, so I don't slice myself open. <clears throat> pop that loose. Now what we're going to do, I'm just going to use this parallel as a spacer on the back. And that, that'll give me some reasonably repeatable um, distance from the back of the workpiece to the front, as far as where I'm working. Again, I'm not working within the tenths of the thousandth here. I'm just, <laughs> I'm probably overdoing certain parts of it anyway. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a skim off the front here and then see where we're at uh, measurement wise with the caliper, the, with the depth part of the, the caliper. <laughs> We're at 1 inch 620-ish. One inch 626, 1 inch 625-ish. Okay, so 1 and 5 eighths. So I have to take an eighth of an inch off the front. Just bring the dial indicator over, touch it off. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring it up to the one inch mark. And I'm actually gonna take and give it another 125. So now what will happen is, uh, as long as I leave this orientation of this tool in, uh, uh, the same, then I should be able to uh, bring it back to the same point every time. I'll have to do another operation to do all the chamfers, but that's fine. That won't take that long. At least this way I can have a reasonably repeatable measurement. <laughs> That last little kiss there is just to take the lip off the edge so it doesn't affect my reading. There we go. I kid you not. So that's with the uh, so that's with my little indicator at zero at the one or the one inch mark rather. So what we're gonna do is you can scale this back here to create some clearance. I'll pop the next one in and it'll do the same. 
as I say, I know I'm going to have to do one more operation to do the chamfers. At least this way I can do all the cutting to length uh, the same. It's not a big deal. I'll bring you back in when they're all uh, when they're all cut to length and chamfered. Okay, seven down. This is number eight. They've all been cut to length. All they need. Or, oh, they've been cut to length. All this one needs is the last. Or all this one needs is to be chamfered. Yeah, about there. Do that enough. Okay, what I'm going to do here is similar to what I've been doing so far. I'm just going to be running through a process of one operation at a time with each part. Right now, because I don't have to index this for a depth of a hole or anything, because they're all just straight through holes, I'm going to put the uh, center drill in here, and I'm just going to just going to spot drill each one, spot the center of each one. Then I'll go through with a pilot drill. Then I'll go through the next step up. seems to me the easiest thing to do, or the quickest thing to do besides just changing tools all the time. So. Next. You get the idea. I'll bring you back in once uh, we're to the next step. All right. All eight are uh, spotted. Leave that one in the chuck. So we're going to pilot drill with a 3 16 A bit of a motion motion, as Uncle Mark would call it. Yeah, my Uncle Mark's pretty cool. down seven to go like usual I'll pause here and bring you back in there we go last pilot hole now I mean I know that uh, my machining instructor Jerry would have said don't don't use steps in drilling um, he, he figured it wasn't necessary on a machine this size um, just to try to keep the tool pressures to a reasonable amount um, I need to do a 15 16 hole at by the time I'm done here so yeah I'm gonna go up in steps this is a 7 16 and then we're gonna go from 7 16 to 5 8 and then up to our 15 16 and then we'll do our tapping Here we go. Just so Pierre knows where everybody's listening to him. I'm going to chamfer them all before threading. So there you go. There's one. This little so and so is hot. It also takes the burr off. But, uh, yeah. So I'm going to do that to all of them before I uh, run the thread uh, threading tap through. Just for you, Pierre. I'm using a little bit of pressure on the tailstock here. Uh, to poke the live center into the hole in the back of the tap and so theoretically with the tap wrench braced against the apron I should be able to just apply a little bit of pressure 
I have had them slip in the chuck on me before while tapping. There we are. Well, ever so slowly getting parts put together here. Um, got, uh, yeah, got about as much as I can get done for tonight. It's stupid late and I'm surprised my wife hasn't been down here uh, rolling her eyes at me yet. But uh, it's happy to get the uh, threaded sleeves done. These will be welded to the end of here. and. Uh, these will be tomorrow's project, making the lock nuts. So this may be a two or potentially three part video, but uh, in the meantime, till we uh, see each other again, uh, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and uh, yeah, I'll see you all next time.